Hello and welcome to the Motherhood Village podcast. I am on with a very special guest. I have Mrs. Lori Al-Hadev, who was raised in New Jersey and lived there for over 38 years. She graduated from the College of New Jersey with a Bachelor of Science in Health and Physical Education and has a Master of Arts in Education from Gratz College. She is also a former K-12 health and physical education teacher. And for 14 years, Lori was a stay-at-home mom of her three children. When her daughter, Alyssa, was tragically killed at Stoneman Douglas High School on February 14th of 2018, she founded Make Our School Safe, dedicated to protecting students and teachers at school. She founded the 501c3 National Nonprofit Organization with her husband of 17 years, Dr. Ian al -Hadef, and became a school safety advocate. In 2018, she was elected to the school board of Broward County, Florida, and currently serves as District 4 board member. Welcome, Lori. How are you today? I am good. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. Okay, I always ask my listeners this, so I want to ask you, sharing resources is very important. It's one of the reasons why I started this podcast four years ago. So what is a favorite book or one that you would like to recommend that you think someone should read or a book that has had an impact on you? And it could be audio, you know, and maybe something that you read years ago, but something that you really want to um, say has impacted you and was something that you it really enjoyed. So author Simon Sinek, He's made a lot of books on leadership, and I would recommend those books to our listeners. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, let's jump in. So first off, Make Our School Safe. I'm sure you didn't go into saying you wanted to create a nonprofit, right? And it was something that came from tragedy. So can you share a little bit about your personal journey from being a mother and teacher and then advocating for school safety and what really motivated you to take action after the tragic loss of your daughter, Alyssa? Because I would imagine when dealing with tragedy, there's different ways people handle it. So why did you feel compelled to start this and to do this work? So after I graduated from college, I was a teacher for five years. And then my husband and I decided to raise a family. We had three children and I was a stay-at-home mom for 14 years. On February 14th, 2018, my daughter Alyssa was one of the victims of the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School school shooting. And I knew that for in order for me to make an impact and make change, that I need to have a seat at the table. So I decided to run for the school board. And currently now this is my fifth year on the school board and my second year as the chair of the Broward County School Board. And then after the tragedy, right away, my husband and I, we started Make Our School Safe, our nonprofit organization. And we're focusing on three things. One is passing Alyssa's Law nationwide as a standard level school safety protection. Secondly, having Make Our School Safe clubs in our high schools. And thirdly, giving back. We've given back already $350,000 to different school safety projects in our schools. That's amazing. And I want to talk briefly about Alyssa's Law because I live in Coral Springs and I didn't even know all of the impact that make our schools safe and what all the work that you've done with Alyssa's Law. I have here, it's a critical legislation addressing the issue of law enforcement response time when a life-threatening emergency occurs because time equals life, which we know. So can you talk a little bit about what the law actually does and how it's impacting schools? Yeah, so we passed Alyssa's Law already in five states. Uh, New Jersey, New York, Florida, Texas, and Tennessee. And Alyssa's law is a panic button. So if there is a, whether it's a medical emergency or an active shooter situation, we want to empower our teachers to push a button on their cell phone or a button on their computer. And when that button is pushed, it's directly linked to law enforcement, geofence the area. So law enforcement can get on the scene as quickly as possible to triage any victims or take down any of the threats. It also could be rolled out in other ways, like a badge teachers wear around their neck or a hardwired type of panic button. So it's kind of crazy because it is in, in essence what like banks would have. Yes. Yeah, so exactly. We've had panic buttons in banks for years, forever. And, you know, unfortunately, our schools is just getting this technology to be able to push that button in a life threatening emergency situation. Well, the sad part is we shouldn't have to think that we need that, right? That's the unfortunate part because I guess no one thought like the technology has been there, but to your point, you know, it's taken, unfortunately, 
this and for you and your husband to step up and say, okay, well, let's do this because it's almost like a no brainer. Like that's almost, you would think like it would almost be like, how is it? Right. Not, is basically the right. point, right? How is it? Well, not? and that's, that's how, that's why we're, our goal for make our school safe is to have Alyssa's law panic funds in every school across the country as a standard level of school safety protection. I love that. So talk about the Moss Clubs. I would imagine, is that an initiative or program that's in addition to Make Our School Safe? Like talk more about that and how students or even the community can get involved. So we have Make Our School Safe clubs in our high schools. We have about 23 different clubs, not only here in Florida, but nationwide. And the clubs are where the students really help to create that culture of safety within their school. So like they see something, say something, have conversations with their school resource officers, do different safety projects. We've had clubs raise money to put a stop the bleed kit in every classroom. So there's different initiatives, whether it's community service driven or safety driven, they can have presenters come to their meetings to present on different school safety aspects. But we really want the students to have that control in mind for school safety at their school. So if you're in a high school and you're a parent listening to this and your school does not already have a Make Our School Safe club, we have a list on our website, makeourschoolsafe.org, where you can see what clubs we already have. But your students, if we have a club established, they can go to club meetings or they can be a leader and start a club at their high school by contacting us. We have a whole handbook on it. We have a Make Our School Safe club director, Lexi Simon, and she will help them work with them to help to establish the club at their high school. I love that. And I would imagine the amount of time and energy that had had and money to put into building something like this. Can you talk about the collaboration you had to do to even do some of this, like to talk to the security advisors, what role do they plan? Like even you want to get this in all, I would imagine all 50 states, right? All schools, all the things. So can you talk about the bandwidth that's needed and really what people like myself can do to help push the initiative forward? So by going on our website, makeourschoolsafe.org, we have a volunteer handbook. And in that handbook, there's different ways that you can get engaged and be involved with the organization, whether you're volunteering, whether you start a fundraiser for your child's school to help raise money for a certain specific like school safety initiative, we would love to collaborate and help you and work together with you. We have three major events uh, we do per year, our golf fundraiser, tennis, and our Live for Lissa gala, Evening Under the Stars, coming up May 18th, 2024. So we would love your help to help make our events amazing and incredible. And we, I really just, my heart goes out to our volunteers because we do have parents that absolutely step up the plate help us because, you know, we can only do so much and that collaboration really makes an impact and difference. How, and excuse me if I miss this, but I know you're in five states, but does that mean you're in all schools in all five states or just specific schools? Like for Florida, like my son is at a charter school. Are you in all the schools here in Florida? Yeah. So in the five states, we're in every public and charter school, but not private school. So private school would have to have a whole different thing. And I would imagine your goal is to get to all of them, but they might no, have absolutely. their own security measures. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Alyssa sounds like she was an incredible young woman. She was daughter, sister, friend. Can you share more about the impact she had with on her own community and how her legacy is being honored through this work? How do you keep her memory alive in the advocacy efforts? I hear you talking about her. Obviously, she's everywhere on the website, which is lovely. How do you push forward with that? But then also as a mom who is in her own process grieving, like how do you balance the two of that? So last night, I just gave out two Alyssa Aldef soccer scholarships to two players at the Parkland Soccer Club. So through the soccer scholarships, we have Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School girls, seniors, soccer players will be applying for the Alyssa Aldef soccer scholarship is one way we I help to keep Alyssa's memory alive. I'm actually here at Pine Ridge Education Center right now, and they just did their music award for Alyssa, and um, we gave two little scholarships to students. So I, I try to 
you know, keep Alyssa's memory alive, not only through the scholarships, but also I say Alyssa lives with inside me, you know, is, you know, it's so painful, obviously, how tragically Alyssa died, it never should have happened. And, and so, you know, I try to turn my pain and grief into action by, by helping others. And I, and I think that, and I feel that it, it really makes um, a difference and helps me to deal with my stress and grief. Yeah, I would imagine so. And it's just beautiful because I mean, as a mom, my son was uh, maybe four months old and I worked at Coconut Creek at the time. And I, I mean, I can remember it vividly. So God only knows, you know, at the time of those that were at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas, the surrounding areas, like, I think it's just something that's imprinted. And I just remember being a new mom and just being like, what, wait, what, huh? How? So the fact that you're, that you have done this, and, and I think the work that is being done in the Parkland Coral Springs area is so beautiful to see people coming together to make sure that the memory is alive of not just Alyssa, but all of the victims, I think is just wonderful. Is there anything, oh, if you can share, and I'll put this in the show notes and all the things when for promotion, but can you share where people can follow? I know you mentioned on the website, there's a donation, but the social media platforms, the actual website name. Sure. So our website's makeourschoolsafe.org. Our Facebook page is Make Our School Safe 17. Instagram is Make Our School Safe. And TikTok is Make Our School Safe underscore. X is at Lori Alhada. Awesome. And lastly, I usually have my guests say any other final thoughts or anything, but I, I do want to also ask, do you see with make our schools safe and maybe even other initiatives. Do you see us changing a corner with having more safety measures in schools, right? My little guys in elementary school, they had to do a drill. And I remember being so scared of like how he would react to that. Will he have anxiety for that? The fact that we even have to do a drill, but I know it is the world that we live in. So are, are you hopeful? I guess my, my question is, are you hopeful of what the future will have? Absolutely. I'm hopeful. I already know since the tragedy in 2018, our schools are so much safer since that tragedy happened. There has been major legislation passed like the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas Act, Alyssa's Law, different school safety measures put in as layers of school safety yeah. protection in our schools that wasn't even there before 2018. So I could say with 100% certainty that our schools are safer than they were before 2018. And that's awesome. And that gives anyone- And we're listening. only, and we're, yeah, we're only just improving, right? Like this, we're only just getting better every day, you know, from our behavioral threat assessments improving and our processes improving, our training improving, yes. and, and then keep creating those layers of school safety protection in our schools. Let me ask you then, Lori, then this will be my final question before final thoughts. What's next for Moss? What's next for Make Our Schools Safe? Like where, I know 50 states, but is there, are there any other aspirations that do you have for this? So really, it, the focus is very streamlined on passing Alyssa's law in every state across this country and also getting a Make Our School Safe club, at least one club in every state across the country. I love that. Well, I'm here to help you share that mission and to help get that across, right? Podcast, we're national babies. So definitely putting putting that out there. But Lori, thank you for your time. But are there any other final thoughts, anything you'd like to share with my listeners before we part ways? So just thank you so much for helping me to make our school safe. Go to our website, makeourschoolsafe.org and follow us on Instagram at makeourschoolsafe. Thank you, Lori, so much for coming on, for sharing your story, for the wonderful, wonderful work that you're doing. God bless you and your family and continued blessings for love and light. Thank you. Thank you.